Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this uh, video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my preferred starting 11 uh, for the Europa League final on Wednesday night. Arsenal versus Chelsea in Baku, a place in the Champions League for us is at stake. Chelsea, of course, have already qualified via their Premier League finish, a Premier League finish that we should have been boasting about this summer, but unfortunately it didn't materialise and now we are left with this one fixture. It's Baku or bust, as I said on the last podcast. Um, so I want to share with you guys my preferred starting eleven, and here it is. Burned Leno in goal, a back three of Socrates, Kishioni, Monreal, Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Ser Kalasinac as the wing-backs with Xhaka Torreira in the middle of the park, Mesut Ozil in the number 10 position and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Alexander Lacazette leading the line. Now, a couple of key points uh, in this selection and, and there are a few points where people may raise their eyebrows. So I want to just justify uh, those selection points. Uh, Burned Leno, for me, has to start in goal. Uh, put aside the fact that he's Arsenal's number one goalkeeper um, and he's Arsenal's best goalkeeper, you know, Petr Cech has, of course, played throughout this Europa League campaign and under normal circumstances, I'd be a huge advocate of him starting the final. Uh, it's his last game of his career, etc., etc. The football romantics will want to see Petr Cech bow out with a trophy. But for me, the fact that this news is doing the rounds that Petr Cech is set to rejoin Chelsea as a technical director means for me that he can't play. Uh, just imagine that Petr Cech made a mistake. Just imagine the backlash. For me, Unai Emery's got to be ruthless here and he's got to go with Bert Leno. This game means everything and he is our best goalkeeper. I don't think anybody will question that after what we've seen this season. Now, of course, when we play with the wing backs, I think they give us an awful lot going forward. It, often it's been the key to unlocking teams that have been stubborn. In particular, Ser Kolasinac on that left-hand side has been magnificent this season. Brilliant. Uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, to his credit, has done a decent job there. But he's not a, a right-back. He's not a right-wing-back. And so you need to cut him some slack when judging his season, I feel, anyway. Um, but there are a couple of issues with this system as well. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I absolutely want us to play with a back four instead or that Emery should do that because I think there are issues with that system too. Unfortunately, we've seen that it doesn't matter what system uh, Emery picks, we're, ca we're incapable of, of putting in a solid defensive performance most of the time. And, and that's a real concern and something that needs to be addressed in the summer with personnel. We've seen sort of changes in system. We've seen coaching has not made an awful lot of difference this season. So we need to go out in the transfer market and, and enhance our options in those areas. But let's talk about some of the issues that I've seen with this system throughout the season. And you may agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments. But a couple of things. Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Ser Kolasinac, although you'd say that they're playing as wing-backs, for me, this is not a... You know, you'd think that this would be a 5-2-1-2 two, two when without possession, but that's not the case, is it? These guys push right up to the halfway line, and even when we have a goal kick, the pair of them go right up, and the centre-backs spread apart. So Monreal and Socrates will move apart here. The problem with that for me is that I believe that a football pitch is too wide to have its entirety covered by three players. And I think that's where maybe a back four works slightly better. Having the back three means that they need to spread out. And when we lose the ball, it takes too long for them to get compact again. And that's a real issue for me. And it's something that's caused us problems. We've spread out in anticipation of receiving the ball. We've given the ball away. And all of a sudden, Socrates and Monreal are out of touch of the game. And the middle centre-back has it all to contend with. And that's been a real problem for me. That's also been a bigger problem because the fact that Xhaka and Torreira, in my opinion, aren't as defensive-minded as they should be at times. And it, Lucas Torreira has done that job from time to time, but I felt as the season went on, he started to push a little bit further forward. I feel like Granit Xhaka um, has mad moments. He loses concentration, and whilst he gives us a lot in terms of a bit of physicality and the ability to pick out a pass from that area. He does have his moments. He does have his lapses in concentration. And that's a real problem. If we're going to play with this system and Maitland-Niles and Kalasinac are going to go so far forward, then you need the likes of Granit Xhaka and Torreira, both of them, not just one of them, to be aware of what is going on, to be aware that their colleagues have come up on the flanks and to make sure that they fill in that space and protect the central defence and fill in when they're spread apart. 
And that just hasn't happened enough for me this season. I think we can all agree that Granit Xhaka, when he's facing that way and he's facing the attacking play, is a very useful player. We know that he can pick out killer passes. We know he's got one hell of a shot on him. But for me, the real problem comes when Granit Xhaka is asked to drop into this area here, when he's asked to pick up the ball here with his back uh, to the opponent's goal. It's a real problem for him. And Lucas Torreira does that role a little bit better. Um, but for me, you know, whilst it's not perfect, it's probably still the best partnership that we've got. You guys that listen to this regularly will know my thoughts on Matteo Ganduzzi. I think he will be a fantastic player. I think he's got a big future ahead of him. But right now, for me, he's not in the best midfield pairing. This is the best midfield pairing that Arsenal have. Yes, they have their faults. Yes, they have their moments. But we're not exactly blessed with lots of options. So for me, that's how I'd go in the midfield. I think Mesut Ozil, um, you know, particularly since this whole thing with Emery happened and then he made his way back into the side, I think he's shown at times what a brilliant, fantastic and influential player he can be. But equally, there have been times where he hasn't turned up and we know that Mesut Ozil sometimes doesn't turn up. But I think when you look at the other options, Henrik Mkhitaryan won't be travelling, Aaron Ramsey's gone and Alex Iwobi for me would probably be the other option. For me, it's got to be Ozil. That is the option uh, for me in that position. And I think what Aubameyang and Lacazette have done well as a partnership this season, apart from obviously scoring a shitload of goals, which is fantastic, is that they pull out into these wide areas. And what they do is they get into the gaps between the fullbacks and the centre-backs, giving the centre-backs a problem. Because as a centre-half, do you pull out wide and, and take your man? Do you pass him on to the fullback? And I think that uh, indecision and that you know conundrum for the centre-backs has proved a problem. And it's been part of the reason why these two guys have been so effective and essentially opening spaces up in these areas on the edge of the box for our number 10 to get into. Now, in an ideal world, in an ideal circumstance, I would probably prefer to see Aaron Ramsey in that position in a game like this because of his energy, because his ability to burst into those areas, those areas created, of course, by the movement of the two strikers and the fact that he, he's got a knack for goal. And I think Mesut Ozil probably should score more goals than he does, and that is a bit of an issue for me as well. But given the options we've got, this is how I would line up. I think some of the things we have to be careful of, I've already touched upon, the centre-backs spreading out. Often against Napoli and against Valencia, we saw those teams identify that as a problem. We saw those teams try and play balls in these channels here, in between the centre-backs, this line here, this line here, and getting runners into those positions, exposing the space left by the fact that Maitland Niles and Kalasinac have gone forward. That means that you know the, the further apart these three are spread, the more gap there is in between, the more space there is for the key players of our opponents to pick up position and cause us problems. But of course, let me know what you guys think. This is my preferred lineup. Uh, this is not necessarily what Unai Emery is gonna go with. If I'm being honest, I probably expect Pedacek to get the nod in goal. But this is what I'd go with, and I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. Your thoughts. Um, and of course, any questions that you might have, I'd be happy to touch on them in the next podcast. We'll be bringing you more Europa League final content in the next uh, couple of days. And don't forget that we'll be reviewing the final the morning after with none other than Arsenal legend uh, Nigel Winterburn. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>